wind up with this many tellers is there's two ways. First of all, some of them won't leave. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, um, you keep meeting new students who are just amazing, and that's exactly what happened when I met Tori Thompson. This is Tori Thompson. Woo! shivering in the cold wind which blew her long white hair into her wrinkled eyes. She could not see much around her, <coughs> but the faint suggestion of hundreds of graves in every direction. She could not hear much, but she could hear the sounds, the whispers of those who had been abandoned before her the sound of big, slow wings in the distance. Today was Reyna's 85th birthday. Because of the immortal king's law, she stood here on the mountain. <clears throat> Reyna remembered being five years old and believing that little girls never turned into 85-year-olds. She thought the same at 20 and 40 and even 80, because she still had so much to live for. Her thriving garden, her beautiful home, her lifelong friendships. But standing here on the mountain, Raina began to think that maybe none of that mattered quite as much as she thought it did. Maybe the immortal king's law was right. Maybe her life just wasn't important. And the more she thought about this, the louder and faster the sound of the wings grew. And Reyna looked up to the sky to see a big black bird circling the top of the mountain, marking her for his prey. <clears throat> but underneath the fear, Reyna heard a sound, a cry. And forgetting her fear for a moment, she searched for the source of the sound and found behind a grave a, a little girl with dirt and blood on her face. And without thinking about her age or the law, Reyna picked up the little girl, who could be no more than six, and decided to save her. And so they escaped death under the cover of darkness. Reyna walked down the mountain that night for a long, long time. And when she finally reached the foot of the mountain, it was almost sunrise. There was no time to escape the kingdom. <coughs> Reyna had forgotten for a moment that she was useless. <coughs> and now, standing here at the foot of the mountain with moments until sunrise without a plan, Reyna could not help but lose faith in herself. And the little girl opened her eyes, and she saw in Reyna exactly what everybody else saw. She saw an old woman with white hair, with wrinkles around her eyes and her mouth, and sunspots on her hands. But she also saw her hero. And she pointed in the direction of a small wooden hut. And when she and Reyna entered, Reyna could not believe her eyes. The place was a mess. There was furniture turned over and broken. The books were on the floor instead of on the shelf. The curtains were torn and tattered. And though the little girl could not speak, Reyna knew this was her home. Too afraid to start a fire for fear of being caught, Reyna washed the little girl's face, and combed her hair, and wrapped her in blankets. And that night, they fell asleep to the sound of the rain on the roof. And for months and months after, the rain continued in storms, big and small, but it did not matter. 
Because rain or shine, Reina and the little girl were stuck in the small wooden hut. But they fixed the furniture, and they mended the curtains, and they shined the windows, and they put the books back on the bookshelf. <coughs> the place was beginning to feel like a home. And then one day, the rain stopped. And the little girl smiled. And without thinking, she ran outside as fast as she could, ready to play in the big, big world under the big yellow sun. And Raina ran after her, afraid of being caught, when suddenly the little girl ran into something. The little girl ran into one of the immortal king's guards. And the guard looked down at the little girl and ahead at Reina, sizing up her age. And they were arrested and escorted to the immortal king's palace, a white marble monument to the excess of royalty floating in a sea of small wooden huts. When they were brought to the immortal king's court, they did not see the immortal king. For in fact, nobody had seen the immortal king for hundreds and hundreds of years because he spent his life behind a big black curtain lined with identical servants in black and white uniforms. There was no color here. The men and the women of the court looked at Reyna, disgusted. But Reyna did not care. She only held the little girl's hand more tightly as they waited in front of the curtain to be sentenced. And they watched as a servant approached the slit in the curtain. And through it came a small scroll. By decree of the immortal king, for disobeying the mountain abandonment law, you shall both be sentenced to death. <clears throat> Raina felt the little girl hold her hand more tightly. And maybe if it was just Raina, she would go back to the mountain quietly. But looking down at the little girl, Raina knew she had to speak up. No! And the men and the women of the court fell silent. I may be old, but I am not boring. I have immeasurable life experience. And I am not useless. I have purpose. And I am not in the way. I give encouragement to those younger than I. And you and your law are wrong. And the men and the women of the court and the servants all began to speak at once. Who was this woman? And how dare she talk to the immortal king this way? <coughs> Under all the conversation, Raina heard a noise not unlike the one she had heard on the mountain many months ago. She heard a cry. Taking advantage of the commotion, she approached the curtain and pushed it open to expose the immortal king. Now some say it was this understanding that caused the king's curse to break. Some say it was Reyna's forgiveness. But whatever the cause, the king began to age again. And he was so grateful that he abolished the mountain abandonment. And the king was happy because he had found friendship in Reyna and the little girl. And the kingdom was happy because they were no longer afraid of the immortal king or of death on the mountain. The little girl was happy because Reyna would always be beside her. And Reyna, the hero of our story, was happy that she was not abandoned on a mountain. <laughs>